Hi there, everybody. Welcome to our third and final vodcast in our earthquake series. Now, this vodcast is going to go over how to read what's called an SP time curve or an SP time chart. Now, this chart's used to find information about earthquakes, such as distance and time, and that's what we're going to practice today. But before we can do that, let's take a look at the chart and see what it all breaks down to. All right, so on the graph, you have your y-axis, as you do on all graphs, and you have your x-axis. Your y-axis is travel time, which is in minutes. So that's our unit. So every number here is a minute. So one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, and so forth. Down here, we have the distance to the epicenter, or a distance away from the epicenter. And this is going to be broken up into kilometers, or thousands of kilometers. So for example, we're going to have zero kilometers, 1,000 kilometers, 2,000 kilometers, 3,000 kilometers, and so forth. When we take a look at the graph, we're going to have two curves. We're going to have the P-wave curve which is the lower one, and the S-wave curve, which is the higher one. Remember, in our last video, we talked about how the P-waves were faster than the S-waves. So their curve is going to be lower because they cover the same amount of ground in less time. So for example, if we take a look here, this P-wave traveled about 2 minutes and 20 seconds and covered 1,000 kilometers as opposed to the S-wave, which took 4 minutes to cover the same amount of ground. Now, when we take a look at our axes here, before we can start reading the graphs, what we need to do is we have to figure out what the subunits are and how much they go up by. So here we have our time travel, which is in minutes. And as we know, the minutes are going to be broken up into seconds. So each one of these lines represents a certain amount of seconds. And if you do the math, it comes out to 20 seconds each. So it goes zero minutes, 20 seconds, 40 seconds, and then 60 seconds, which gives us the next minute. And then it goes one minute, 20, one minute, 40, and then two minutes, 220, 240, 3 minutes, and all the way up the axis. Then on the bottom here, again, each number is worth 1,000 kilometers. So each line is going to be worth a certain amount of kilometers. When we take a look and you do the math again, it's going to come out to about 200 kilometers each line. It's going to be 0 kilometers, 200 kilometers, 400 kilometers, 600 kilometers, 800 kilometers, and then 1,000 kilometers. And then it continues on. 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000 kilometers. So that's how we read the axes on our graph. So let's get to some of our examples here. If you take a look at the top, the question asks you, how long did it take a P wave to travel 2,000 kilometers? Now, just like with any word problem, you have to take what they give you and use it. So they ask, how long did it take? So I've got to find time and they give me the wave that I have to calculate for. So they give me the P wave. I know that I've got to use this curve somehow, and they give me the distance the P wave traveled. Being that this is the value that they give me, this is where I'm going to start from. So I'm going to take a look at 2. I'm going to circle 2, which means 2,000. So I have a reference point, and I have to figure out how long it took that wave to travel. And it's really easy. All you have to do is take your pencil or pen and move up the line until it hits the curve because you have to go up the 2000 line because that's what they give you. And once you hit the curve, it's time to move over. And when you move over and you drag your pencil or pen over, what you'll find is that it takes about four minutes for the P wave to travel 2000 kilometers. So your answer is going to be four minutes. That's pretty simple. So why don't you pause this video and then go on and answer the questions on your work packet and tune me back in when you're ready to go on to the next section. All right, welcome back. I hope those questions were nice and easy. Okay, so let's go on to the next part. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to do the opposite. We're going to find out how far or the distance a wave traveled in the time that was given. So this example says, how far did an S wave travel in 10 minutes? So instead of using the P wave curve, I'm going to use the S wave curve in this example. And again, I got to find distance using time. Since they give me 10 minutes, I'm going to start off at 10 minutes. So I'm going to mark that so I know that's exactly where I'm starting from. And you're going to do the same exact thing like you did in the previous example, just in the opposite order. All right, so at 10 minutes, I'm going to move across until I intersect with the S wave curve. And then once I hit the S wave curve, I'm going to drop on down to see what my distance was. And as you can see, my distance was 3,000 kilometers. Easy peasy. So why don't you pause this again and answer those practice questions on your packet. All right, hopefully that was easy enough too. Let's get on to something a little bit more tricky, the lag time. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to find the distance using lag time. Now, lag time is the time that passes between the arrival of the P wave and then the arrival of the S wave. For you video gamers out there, you know what lag is. Usually if you're playing a game and you hit the key and you're waiting for your character on the screen to do something, 
if a lot of time passes by between you hitting the key and then the character reacting, what you're going to say is, wow, it's really laggy because there's too much time passing between what you did and then the reaction of the character on the screen. Same kind of principle here. That lag time is going to be the delay between the arrival of the P wave and then the arrival of the S wave. So if we take a look at our example three up here, it says a P wave arrived in Los Angeles at 10.05 a.m. The S wave arrived at 10.12 and 20 seconds a.m. How far away is the epicenter? So always remember when you're given time like this, the first set of values, the 10 is going to be the hour. So that'd be like 10 o'clock. And then the second set of values would be five. So 10 o'clock and five minutes. And then your third set of values is going to be the seconds. Since this arrived at 10.05 even, we have zero seconds here. However, as you know, as minutes go, seconds tick by. So this is going to be 10 hours, 12 minutes, and 20 seconds. 10, 12 with 20 seconds. Now, the first thing you have to do is grab a piece of scrap paper. And when you grab the piece of scrap paper, you must line it up along the edge of the axis here. Okay, so you take the edge of your paper and line it up exactly with the edge of the graph. That's what you must to do. All right, now that your paper is all lined up with that y-axis here, you have to mark off the lag. If you take a look at the time that you're given, you'll notice that between the arrival of the P wave at 10.05 and then the arrival of the S wave at 10.12 and 20 seconds, the lag time is going to be 7 minutes and 20 seconds. So that means when the P wave arrived, 7 minutes and 20 seconds later, the S wave arrived. So you have to mark it off on your scrap paper. Well, you have to find where 7 minutes and 20 seconds are. So as we said, each line is worth 20 seconds, so this should be pretty easy. You're going to go up to 7 minutes and then mark off 20 seconds. So what you should be doing right now is this. You should be marking, when you do these marks, marking off the top or the time of the lag, so 7 minutes and 20 seconds, and you should make a mark at 0. You need to make these two marks because you need to be able to see them to do the next part. The next part is this. Once you've marked off zero and your lag time, which again in this case is seven minutes and 20 seconds, what you're going to then do is take your scrap paper and you're going to make sure your mark of zero rides along this curve for the P wave. And you'll see why in a moment. Okay, I'm going to do my best since I'm using a mouse, but I'm going to keep my zero minute mark riding this P wave curve and I'm trying to find the spot in which both these marks fit perfectly. And that's right there. Okay, so the seven minutes and 20 seconds of distance I marked on my paper is the same as this spot right here. Once I'm able to fit my marks, the seven minute and 20 second mark on the S curve and then the zero minutes on the P curve, and this space or these markings on my scrap paper fit perfectly, it's just a matter of dropping down and reading the x-axis. And when we read the x-axis, we can see that the distance to the epicenter is 5,800 kilometers. And that's all you have to do to find this. Now the reason why we need to know this is because what you're going to do in your lab is you're going to do a process called triangulation where you have to find the distance using the lag times. All right, so now go on, practice these questions, and hopefully you'll find those easy just like the first two sets. Okay, thank you for your time.